All right. Hello. Good morning. Uh, so. Yeah. It's a weird notification from Twitch. Is it good? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, I think last week we had uh, spun up or started to spin up this uh, GPU batch job queue compute environment. What a name. Uh, <laughs> So this, this thing that's gonna let us run GPU um, utilizing code in AWS, in AWS Batch, using spot EC2 instances, that's a lot of concepts, a lot of things there, but uh, specifically it wasn't working and it wasn't really clear to me and it took me a little bit to figure out, to kind of trace through uh, what had happened um, so like you can look at the compute environments and you can see compute resources here. Um, and but this didn't tell me anything. How did I, how did I end up troubleshooting this? I think maybe in AC2. Um, so like this, uh, AWS batch leverages a lot of things that are in the EC2 part of the console, right? So in this case, we're talking about uh spot requests which there aren't currently any because I, I don't have any jobs but i i think i can't view old ones can i um it was either here or maybe it was in launch templates I think it was in spot requests, like drilling into this. Um, there was a message effectively saying that it couldn't provision or anything. And it was kind of ambiguous. Uh, but eventually I realized the issue is that I could not provision spot instances um, of the G uh, instance type family, right? So if I go back to the compute environment here in batch, um, yeah, we want to use the instance type G4DN. Uh, so there's a bunch of different sizes of this and it will, you know, pick something, uh, but I couldn't. And so it, as it turns out, in order to do that, um, you have to request a quota increase, which, um, we, where do we see that? Maybe if I go to me and then service quotas. And then you want to look at not batch but EC2. View quotas. So there's this all GNVT spot instance requests. So you can see, so this was originally zero. So I could not make any spot instance requests for any any of the instance types that serve with the G. So basically anything with like uh, GPU. Um, you can see. There are other defaults and other values for other kinds of spawn instances. Just, uh, and this is not a big deal. Uh, some of these quotas in AWS will be like automatically approved and go through. It seems like for the GPU ones though, you do make a request and it has to be um, like reviewed by someone at AWS, but it was like less than 24 hours, which for me, it was fine. It was like, okay, well, I I want to figure this out before the next stream, uh, and we got that sorted out. But uh, I imagine if you were in a rush and thinking, oh, I can just spin up whatever resources in AWS uh, and have things in minutes, you are going to be surprised. Um, but I think that's to protect them from abuse. Some of these instances are very expensive um, and are somewhat of a limited resource. Uh, but anyway, uh, we get there though. And I think maybe, I don't know if it's too long now. Let's see. Yeah, we have one job. It failed, but the failure was a success. All right, so we can actually look at the log from the program. And we can see we have a usage error. 
So uh, that I think makes sense because when I triggered the job, I did not provide any parameters. Like the parameters are here, but I didn't provide an input to the run to fill in these parameters. Something like that. MP input key initial prompt language, so four, four things. Uh, so I guess, what do we want? Where do we want to go from here? Is the question, right? So let's let's take a look back at the code that we're running. Uh, generally, the the idea here is that we're going to be um, running uh, OpenAI Whisper, this command line program. That's what we're doing here and getting the output. And then we are writing the output to DynamoDB. Uh, pretty straightforward, right? I wonder. Um, I saw you on a rock, boy. Thinking about how I might want to go about testing this without having to push to AWS over and over again. Um, I mean, for that matter, like I can run this locally. I would just need to set up credentials so that this can talk to DynamoDB. Um, but I want to just do this. Or, all right, um, this also reads from S3, right? So we are, we're finding a, an S3 object, and reading it and doing the processing in that manner. So it, it both reads data from S3 and then writes to DynamoDB. Um, and then the core of this is then uh, oh, what build whisper command process S3 then so now we're reading uh, from S3 and writing to SDDN. So what I'm thinking about doing is like, if we can extract out all the AWS specific stuff from this function or pull out the parts that aren't, yeah, that's what extract means. Uh, take the, uh, let's see, what are we doing with temp tear? Okay, yeah, so like this part, uh, hey brainless, how's it going? Here's where we're interacting with S3, right? To get the object. We have this loop where we're reading over the body. What is the type here? This is a byte stream. Doing all right? Uh, fighting with this production bug. Uh, I recall you saying something about a production bug. Is that last week? Same one or different one? How am I? I'm doing good. I, I keep on glancing over to my water glass, but. Uh, started using a uh, uh, fluoride mouthwash. I feel like, you know, ever since I started Invisalign, it's been uh, a very, a, a lot more focus on kind of dental hygiene uh, in my life. But yeah, so uh, I got to wait half an hour before. Same one fighting last year too. Hmm. Yeah, so here in maybe another 15 minutes, I'll be able to have some water again. Um, yeah, otherwise good. Yeah, confirmation of your theory. Well, there you go. You have, <laughs> does, does your theory have, uh, um, is there some hope of a fix? Even though I'm the only one thinking that it uh, is that, I see. Hmm. Okay, so like this part, this part, so all of this is fine. It's really what I need to do, I guess, is to so try next. What actually is that? Uh, let 
me explain it, it is a big, bit lengthy, so we'll try to keep it short. Sure. I'm curious. So this is implementation of a byte stream, but this is a, like a type from uh, it could be a smithy types. What's the difference here between we have next returns an option of a result. We have try next that returns a result of an option. Making for easy use with the question mark operator. I guess I can make something that takes a byte stream, even though it is like this type from this AWS crate. Do I want to do that. Is there a way for me to instantiate a byte stream from static? Yeah. Okay, Brainless says, for a long time, I've been thinking uh, it's a Redis issue since uh, once it happens, data from one log jumps into the next log from another session and the pattern repeats. Also, some methods which expect JSON data die due to the incorrect data format being received and all those issues happen randomly, but only together. Huh. Um, interesting. The other day we added some logs to an error which was saying can't do operation X in array, but the data is supposed to be a proto buff. Interesting. Are you you're storing a proto buff in Redis? I guess that's fine. I mean a proto buff is effectively like binary data, right? So I asked to log the output and the data was mass as we didn't know what was there. Ah. Okay. Data was masked. I can understand like if you have existing logging and you have some kind of masking, uh, either. Yeah. If the content was the first element of the ray received. Huh. Um, you guess what it could be? Uh, I don't. First element. No, I don't. I, I don't get it. <laughs> what does it mean? Oh, unsubscribe. Hmm. Are you using a, some existing library to interact with the Redis or are you, is there something like home rolled? that's like building the commands to send and parsing things back out. You know, I'm subscribed from a uh, pub sub and Redis, you get an array like, oh, oh sure, sure. Maybe an issue in the interface library. They're not supposed to be sent to the client. Oh, no. sure. Currently going through the library. Yeah. It's probably not, not Redis itself. That that is. <laughs> it, it's easy to blame like third party programs. Like, oh, there's a bug in the thing, but. Uh, usually not. Unless you're doing something very weird. Uh, let's see. Redis had that bug technically. Okay. 
Oh, and the red is CLI. Okay. Hmm, how do I want to do this? Maybe I'll make a function called run whisper on byte stream. That's what that's called. And um Subscribe and then get and get the array. Like it, the Redis CLI has come some kind of internal buffer that gets the returned uh, thing from the unsubscribe, and then somehow that sounds like an async issue, right? Where you like, oh, I have something in the buffer and I return it rather than waiting for the actual result of the get. Yeah. Uh, so we're gonna run on byte stream. Actually, is there is there um, any kind of um, hmm? What methods do we have here on byte stream? Uh, Braylon says suddenly the the issue only happens on production, so can't reproduce it. Well, uh, that that is a familiar story. <laughs> What what is different about production, and why is production different? Yeah. So, light stream find somewhere. us anything yeah things for it default for from sdk body for byte stream from bytes for byte stream from evacuate for byte stream oh. i'm just thinking if there's something if there's something more generic that i can pass around that now I guess this will be it. We'll do this. Um, so this is gonna be wrong. Let's see. We do need config. We don't need input key. Um, this probably should be a reference. So the type that we return here is, um, yeah, okay, it should be the same type as this, right? Results of uh, whisper output or audio transcri trans blah, blah, transcriber error. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Uh, Brainless says, I asked ops, the lower environments match production on Elasticash infrastructure, just size difference. Well, if the issue is the interface, right? It's it's not Redis itself, but I mean, it could be something in kind of Elastic Cache infrastructure. But if it's if it's not that, if it's some interface issue, um, like library issue, then it's going to vary based on like what's deployed, right? I pull down changes. There's a code issue. Why won't it happen in a dev QA or stage? Um, actually, so if if there was, if somehow the issue was an async issue, I could see how size difference would matter, right? Performance characteristics would change timing, and that could make a difference. Can you size up dev? <laughs> Be as big as prod, just temporarily. All right, so I think I can take most of the implementation of this and move it into the new function. So 
first I'll just take a copy. And then what I'll want to do is, really the only change is like object.body, byte stream. Right, body is a byte stream. Maybe. Uh, and then we just say what what's going on here. Is that really the only thing that was really specific to interacting with the AWS SDK? All right, getting the object. We don't need to do that. Yes. Okay. Uh, we could, but we don't have the traffic, which could be the likely factor. Yes, that makes sense too. Uh, we're missing language. There we go. And we don't need config in this function after all. And it's not happy with this. Cannot borrow by stream is mutable. It's behind a reference. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, I guess this needs to be mutable, a mutable reference. Yeah, seems fine. And then just about everything else here goes away, right? The only thing that's left for this function is um, Run whisper on byte stream. Something like that. Uh, all right. Got. Oh wait. Uh, byte stream doesn't exist. We actually have to like get it. So that's object dot body. Body body. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, is there? And we pass on the mutable reference into the new function. Do you have? Um, I mean, I mean, assuming when you say you don't have the traffic, that that means you don't have a way of kind of synthesizing the traffic. Um, I guess that means you probably don't have kind of uh, any kind of automated test suite that would be suitable for the purposes of, of synthesizing said traffic. Uh, you wouldn't you wouldn't know it from looking at the kind of coding I do on stream, <laughs> but I'm a big proponent of uh, test automation um, at all the all the levels of the testing pyramid. Um, but uh, I can't be bothered for this. Although I guess effectively what I'm doing right now is trying to move towards a place where I can more easily test this locally. Um, we just need the ability to, to run this run whisper on byte stream function. Um, so I think what I will do, what's this complaining about? Message is never read. Interesting claim. Of course, we emit the error. I guess it's looking across anything that's consuming. Ah, whatever. It's fine. Uh, so, if I wanted to do something really simple, I could. Uh, let's see. Run whisper on byte stream. And then just not even worry about arguments. Yeah, like that. There we go. Uh, and then I would await this. And then unwrap it. And what would that give me? Potentially a... Where's the type that I defined? Why isn't it, why isn't it here? Those things anymore, apparently. Um, I 
has bites. Does that make you happy? Convert from this is not satisfied. Let's do it this way then. Yeah, we will qualify it. There, that that's good. Um, hmm. Um, we get a result, and then we're going to print the result, and then we're going to exit for now. That's the process exit zero. Yeah, we can. Actually, what is that? What is that? Uh, change this to result. Variables can be used directly in the format string. How does that work if I'm doing this syntax? Oops. Does that do a thing? I guess it's this way. suggestion and if I compile this I should be able to run this and see an error uh, considering this is expecting a, like a byte stream of like audio instead of just some text uh, so this is gonna fail but maybe this will fail in an interesting way uh, let's see cargo cargi cargo build And of course, we're getting warnings that everything else in the program is now unreachable. That's fine. Oh, it built. Okay, so. Uh, where'd you. <laughs> where's that? Where's the output get? I forget. Target. Yeah. Uh, release. Um, maybe not. Oh, it's dev profile. So probably debug. So many things. What is this program called? Audio transcriber. Hooray! Error running whisper. No such file director. I may not have whisper installed. Uh, let's see, more, um, there, okay, it's called opening eye whisper. For once, I'm actually just going to run something locally, ish, I mean, this is inside a WSL, uh, instead of a virtual end, but you know. Apparently, I've never done this. It's always been inside of a Docker container. All right, and it's been long enough. I can finally have some water again. Hmm. So some of the things I'm interested in testing here is kind of just that things work in general without having to do the deploy to AWS loop over and over again. Um, and then I can probably have this read from, I don't know if I, I have an audio file just laying around. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, 
Uh, but we can check that. Um, I might try to also test the this logic works. Just converting converting it properly into uh, attribute value for DynamoDB. Um, we can check that. We can also try making some changes to parameters here. So we can change the model. Um, I can actually just, now that I have this installed locally, I can run, uh, check what the command line arguments are. It's been a while since I've looked at what all the different options are. Many months, many months at this point. All right, just a few dependencies. successful but in, install but no it's it's still it's actually finishing right now <sighs> so after this um what's next what are we what are we trying to do i got a i got a flow chart <laughs> Kind of ignored the first part of this right at some point i want to do more about kind of um automating some some of the setup stuff but i think more interesting is kind of figuring out this step down here right so oh yeah so we have transcription with open AI whisper Um, and then we also need a thing that's going to call OpenAI's API. Oh, right, right, right. So I think the, the next thing I was intending to do once we got this to work was start, start working on a step function that is going to orchestrate calling this batch job for each of the video files. Well, the, the audio extracted from each of the video files. So yeah, so let's let's do a little bit of testing here. So first of all, if I run Whisper, if I could only type <laughs> help, there we go. So many options, so many. Uh, so we have different languages. We have tasks, transcribe or translate. Default is transcribe. Uh, positional arguments, audio files to transcribe. Um, hallucination silence thresholds. Interesting. I've definitely noticed that. Um, oh, this is an opportunity actually, right? Because one of the things that we did a stream or two ago was work on doing the silence detection as part of the initial uh, video ingestion, right? So to detect where silences are. So potentially um, we could leverage that to also like cut out or skip silences, but it looks like there's an option here as well. So maybe that's not necessary for this. So what does this do? Skip silent periods longer than this threshold when a possible hallucination is detected. Word timestamps true. Word timestamps true. Extract word level timestamps and refine the results based on them. Default val false. So this is experimental. Okay. So doing this would require this, and this is experimental. So maybe we don't we don't want to do that right now. Um. Interesting. Comment summary list. Start and start and timestamps. Clips to process. The last in timestamp defaults to the end of the file. Oh. 
So within a file, you can say, just look at this section and this section and this section and this section. So that'd be really good, potentially. Let me, let me um, copy this. We're gonna, we're gonna make a note here uh, about that, because I think that might be an option that we wanna be able to pass in. Um, because that would let uh, let this leverage the silence detection we've already done. Skip over the silences completely. Um, right, so what I was going to say is I have noticed, like, generally at the beginning of the stream, I have the kind of the intro countdown thing. And so there's a long period of time, like many minutes, where it's just silence. And I have seen in the program, like the output of this, that it will hallucinate uh, a sentence or a set of words over and over and over again to fill the silence, right? It's just like hallucinating words uh, <laughs> from the silence um, based on kind of the context, the, the um, what I call it, initial prompt, right? So the initial prompt when I do this normally is like, this is a, a audio from a VOD from a live stream, something, something, something. Um, and so it, based on that, will hallucinate like uh, some live streamy like words, right? So so maybe that that is a good option that we can pass in. Number of threads used by Torch for CPU inference, we're using um, CUDA, so don't need that. Uh, da, da, da. Right, so that's through the device option, which is the default. Model DIR, the path to save model files, uses dot cache, uh, cache whisper, dot cache whisper by default. Um, default none, right? Am I passing a model DIR? I am this model DIR, which suggests that, yeah, I think I was creating a directory there for that to live. Um, what I really should do is I should figure out how to get it to download the model. And then run that inside of the Docker file so it can pre-download it and it'll be built into the image. of the no speech token is higher than this value and decoding has failed due to log prop threshold and so this segment has silence. So potentially also I could tune this. These other thresholds. specifying language. Yep. Initial optional text to provide as prompt for the first window. Previous text. If true, provide the previous output of the model as a prompt for the next window. Disabling may make the text inconsistent across windows. Right. So, like, what I'm talking about doing um, once we're done with getting this program working is to essentially, it's already like looking at a section of the audio 
at a time on window. And then um, kind of like shifting the window through the audio to do the transcription. And then I'm you know, going to be running this whisper program multiple times and effect effectively doing the same thing at a bigger scale across the different audio files from the live stream. Yeah. yeah. Is that going to work well? I don't know. It's better than what I'm doing now where I'm just treating each um, each audio file like individually and not carrying over any context. What is beam size? I mean, there's also a temperature option here. Temperature used for sampling default to zero. Number of candidates when sampling with non-zero temperature default five. Number of beams and beam search only have more temperature is zero default five. Patience. Interesting. So these are all things that I could, like I could turn all of these into options, right? That we could pass through. Uh, but I don't think I will right now. Um, right. So one thing I wanted to look at was the model. Model. Name of the whisper. Default is turbo. Uh, maybe let me open AI whisper. This is what we're using. So the thing that I've been using for transcription to date has been the tiny model. It's very fast. Uh, turbo is nearly as fast, well, sort of. Um, it looks like it is kind of comparable in parameters to medium but it uses slightly more RAM, but is, you know, four times faster. Interesting. Oh. I might try, I think let's, um, let, let's add a model parameter. I think I'll do this as a, uh, um, not a struct, it's an enum, right? En en enum, uh, model. So the actual options are tiny, base, small, medium, large, turbo. Tiny, base. Small, medium, large, and turbo. Hmm. I think also what I'm going to do, if I'm going down this path, I'm going to make a struct called Whisper Options. There we go. Yep. Initial prompt model DIR is not really... It's, it's kind of hard-coded, and so is output format. Now, all of these things are not really things that I care about. Task, device uh, are all things I don't want to change. Clip timestamps is thing is something I do potentially want to parameterize. Uh, let's see, let's go back to here. Yeah, and then I'm gonna change this command to instead take parameters. I guess options, since I use that word 
since kill pilot generated whisper options i'll use options uh and then yeah so we won't use tiny i'm gonna do yeah i guess i can do that i could like implement some from thing for for it but this is i mean hmm Hmm. Now nah, this is fine. I won't do something. I, I won't do uh, anything fancier than this. We can just do this. All right. Output format. Output UR. That's the language. All right. And then clip time stamps will be that. All right. So that's going to break something. There we go. Now we don't have that information here. So we have options, be whisper options, and we just pass through options to here. Uh, oops, temp there. Good. And this becomes options. And options. Nope. No, no. Options. There. And we just percolate the change all the way up. Now. what I will do is build that options. There we go. Something like that. So that's effectively the same thing as what the default is right now, right? Default zero. Um, for now. I can come back to this later and add additional command line args to this program. To then pass that through. And then we're gonna use turbo. We're gonna try turbo. That seems good. Alright, and then alright. Oh, this is now wrong. Our little test. Uh, missing some things, language. There we go. And whisper model doesn't implement debug. Variants are never constructed. Build. So if I run this, this is still probably going to fail. There we go. Permission denied. We're not inside of a Docker container. So of course, model isn't a folder this can write to. Um, I guess I will add the model directory to the options here. Oops. There we go. Uh, should be whatever the default is. Interesting. Uh, let's see. What did uh, what was the default according to this? Uh, this. Let's see if that works. 
All right, two strength. Yep. And this is going to be busted uh, until we change this to that. Build again. At least this is a bit faster than deploying to AWS <laughs> and then running the batch job, which would be at least a few minutes of uh, overhead. Uh, oh, right. I, it, helps, it helps if I actually use the option after I add it. Oh, this is it downloading the model. Is there a way to run the command line and have it download the model without actually having an input yet? Let's, uh, let's try this. So if I do whisper, model uh, large language in yeah following arguments are required audio um dev null okay so the question is going to be so this did trigger it to download the model um, maybe this should be a better place for the, the keyboard cam. Uh, let's see. What do we think about like maybe right there? Maybe up here? Just thinking of where it's not going to be in the way. Let's try there for now. So the question is going to be after it downloads this model, is is this going to try to read from DevNull forever? Uh, we'll see. All right, and then download the model. Uh, there's some warnings, yada yada yada, stuff happening. Hopefully, this does not mess with the stream. We'll see, we will see. So what it should be trying to do right now is parse, uh, read the supposed audio, which there isn't, right? It's just some text, it's not actually audio. So we'll see what happens. But better to do this here than have to deploy. Hello. So we await this and we exit. So what what are we actually doing? We are, we create a temporary tree. We build that whisper commands. We uh, pipe, we grab STDN. We consume bytes from the byte stream and write them to STDN. And then once we've consumed the byte stream completely, we flush and we wait for the program to complete and look at its exit status. And then we attempt to parse the file that it wrote out uh, as JSON and return that in our, our struct. So what what what's taking so long here? Um, so this didn't seem to be <laughs> A good result because it was just kind of sitting there uh, doing something. Looks 
like maybe it was just loading. Maybe it's taking a while to load the uh, model. Maybe that's what this is doing too. How big was the model? A one and a half gigs. Hmm. How long do we think this is going to take? Huh. Let's see. Let's see. Um, let's go back over here. Is there ztokenizer.py for a list of all available languages? Sure. It's all that. Tokenizer. Uh, it'd be nice if there was like a, a way to just have it download the model. Okay, well, it's time for a break. I'll be back in a couple minutes. Here we go. 